Welcome back, my friend. Hello. This is day number 69. Today it's my pleasure to read to you Numbers 3, Psalm 27, and our second reading in Luke 18. May the Lord bless you through His Word today. Let's open to Numbers 3. Yesterday we heard about the organization of Israel's camp having three tribes on each of the four sides of the tabernacle. This determined their marching position when the whole group moved. Numbers 3 This is the family of Aaron and Moses at the time the Lord spoke to Moses on Mount Sinai. Aaron had four sons, Nadab, the oldest, Abihu, Eleazar, and Ithamar. They were anointed and ordained as priests, but Nadab and Abihu were killed when they offered unholy fire to the Lord in the Sinai desert. They had no children, so Eleazar and Ithamar served as priests during Aaron's lifetime. The Lord said to Moses, Bring forward the tribe of Levi, and appoint them as servants of Aaron the priest. They shall do the work required for the tent of my presence, and perform duties for the priests and for the whole community. They shall take charge of all the equipment of the tent, and perform the duties for the rest of the Israelites. The only responsibility the Levites have is to serve Aaron and his sons, You shall appoint Aaron and his sons to carry out the duties of the priesthood. Anyone else who tries to do so shall be put to death. The Lord said to Moses, The Levites are now to be mine. When I killed all the firstborn of the Egyptians, I consecrated as my own the oldest son of each Israelite family and the firstborn of every animal. Now, instead of having the firstborn sons of Israel as my own, I have the Levites. They will belong to me. I am the Lord. In the Sinai Desert, the Lord commanded Moses to register the Levites by clans and families, enrolling every male a month old or older, and Moses did so. Levi had three sons, Gershon, Kohath, and Merari who were the ancestors of the clans that bear their names. Gershon had two sons, Libni and Shimei. Kohath had four sons, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Uziel. And Merari had two sons, Mahli and Mushi. They were the ancestors of the families that bear their names. The clan of Gershon was composed of the families of Libni and Shimei. The total number of males one month old or older that were enrolled was 7,500. This clan was to camp on the west behind the tent, with Eliasaph, son of Lael, as chief of the clan. They were responsible for the tent, its inner cover, its outer cover, the curtain for the entrance, the curtains for the court which is around the tent and the altar, and the curtain for the entrance of the court. They were responsible for all the service connected with these items. The clan of Kohath was composed of the families of Amram, Ishar, Hebron, and Uziel. The total number of males, one month old or older, that were enrolled was 8,600. This clan was to camp on the south side of the tent with Elizaphan, son of Uziel, as chief of the clan. They were responsible for the covenant box, the table, the lampstands, the altars, the utensils the priests use in the holy place, and the curtain at the entrance to the most holy place. They were responsible for all the service connected with these items. The chief of the Levites was Eleazar, son of Aaron the priest. He was in charge of those who carried out the duties in the holy place. The clan of Merari was composed of the families of Mahli and Mushi. The total number of males one month old or older that were enrolled was 6,200. This clan was to camp on the north side of the tent, with Zuriel, son of Abihail, as chief of the clan. 
They were assigned responsibility for the frames for the tent, its bars, posts, bases, and all its fittings. They were responsible for all the service connected with these items. They were also responsible for the posts, bases, pegs, and ropes for the outer court. Moses and Aaron and his sons were to camp in front of the tent on the east. They were responsible for carrying out the services performed in the holy place for the people of Israel. Anyone else who tried to do so was to be put to death. The total number of all the Levite males one month old or older that Moses enrolled by clans at the command of the Lord was 22,000. The Lord spoke to Moses, All of Israel's firstborn sons belong to me. So register by name every firstborn male Israelite, one month old or older. But in place of them I claim all the Levites as mine. I am the Lord. I also claim the livestock of the Levites in place of all the firstborn of the livestock. Moses obeyed and registered all the firstborn males, one month old or older. The total was 22,273. The Lord said to Moses, Now dedicate the Levites as mine in place of all the firstborn Israelite sons, and dedicate the livestock of the Levites in place of the firstborn of Israel's livestock. Since the firstborn Israelite sons outnumber the Levites by 273, you must buy back the extra sons. For each one, pay five pieces of silver according to the official standard, and give this money to Aaron and his sons. Moses obeyed and took the 1,365 pieces of silver and gave them to Aaron and his sons. And now let's turn to Psalm 27. This is a beautiful song, expressing David's confidence in the Lord's protection, and he asks the Lord to vindicate him. The Hebrew title is By David. Psalm 27 The Lord is my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. The Lord protects me from all danger. I will never be afraid. When evil people attack me and try to kill me, they stumble and fall. Even if a whole army surrounds me, I will not be afraid. Even if enemies attack me, I will still trust God. I have asked the Lord for one thing, one thing only do I want to live in the Lord's house all my life, to marvel there at His goodness and to ask for His guidance. In times of trouble He will shelter me, He will keep me safe in His temple and make me secure on a high rock. So I will triumph over my enemies around me, With shouts of joy I will offer sacrifices in his temple. I will sing, I will praise the Lord. Hear me, Lord, when I call to you. Be merciful and answer me. When you said, Come worship me, I answered, I will come, Lord. Don't hide yourself from me. Don't be angry with me. Don't turn your servant away. You have been my help. Don't leave me. Don't abandon me, O God, my Savior. My father and my mother may abandon me, but the Lord will take care of me. Teach me, Lord, what you want me to do, and lead me along a safe path because I have many enemies. Don't abandon me to my enemies who attack me with lies and threats. I know that I will live to see the Lord's goodness in this present life. Trust in the Lord. 
Have faith. Do not despair. Trust in the Lord. We turn for the second time to Luke 18. Yesterday, in the first of this chapter, Jesus told the parable of the persistent widow and the one about the Pharisee and the tax collector. And we heard Jesus' surprising response to the rich young man. Luke 18, starting at verse 18. A Jewish leader asked Jesus, Good teacher, what must I do to receive eternal life? Jesus replied, Why do you call me good? No one is good except God alone. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not commit murder, do not steal, do not accuse anyone falsely, respect your father and your mother. The man replied, Ever since I was young I have obeyed all these commandments. When Jesus heard this, he said to him, There is still one more thing you need to do. Sell all you have and give the money to the poor, and you will have riches in heaven. Then come and follow me. But when the man heard this, he became very sad, because he was very rich. Jesus saw that he was sad and said, How hard it is for rich people to enter the kingdom of God. It is much harder for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. The people who heard him asked, Who then can be saved? Jesus answered, What is humanly impossible is possible for God. Then Peter said, Hey, look, we've left our homes to follow you. Yes, Jesus said to them, and I assure you that anyone who leaves home or wife or brothers or parents or children for the sake of the kingdom of God will receive much more in this present age and eternal life in the age to come. Jesus took the twelve disciples aside and said to them, Listen, we're going to Jerusalem where everything the prophets wrote about me, the Son of Man, will come true. I will be handed over to the Gentiles who will make fun of me, insult me, and spit on me. They will whip me and kill me, but three days later I will rise to life. But the disciples did not understand any of these things. The meaning of the words was hidden from them, and they did not know what Jesus was talking about. As Jesus was coming near Jericho, there was a blind man sitting by the road begging. When he heard the crowd passing by, he asked, What's this? Jesus of Nazareth is passing by, they told him. He cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The people in front scolded him and told him to be quiet, but he shouted even more loudly, Son of David, have mercy on me! So Jesus stopped and ordered the blind man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? He answered, Sir, I want to see again. Jesus said to him, Then see! You believe in me, and so you were made well. At once he was able to see, and he followed Jesus, giving thanks to God. When the crowd saw this, they all praised God. In the portion of our prayer today in which I use Psalm 27, normally, I would pray about us and we using the words of Psalm 27, changing the pronouns in order to make them appropriate for both of us. But this time I'm going to use David's words, I and me, and I'm not just talking about me, I want you also to be saying me and I along with me. So let's pray together. 
Our dear Heavenly Father, just like that blind man along the road, we pray that you would open our eyes. Jesus told the disciples what was going to happen, that he was going to be rejected and handed over to the Gentiles, and he would suffer much, and they didn't get it, because you did not allow their spiritual eyes to be open. But Lord, open our eyes, that we will see wonderful things in your word, and also what's going on in the world. And so we say with David, You, Lord, are my light and my salvation. I will fear no one. You, Lord, protect me from all danger. I will never be afraid. When evil people attack me and try to kill me, they stumble and fall. Even if a whole army surrounds me, I will not be afraid. Even if enemies attack me, I will still trust in you, my God. I ask you for one thing, O Lord. This is the thing that I want more than anything else. Lord, I want to live in your house all the days of my life, to marvel there at your goodness and to ask for your guidance. You will shelter me. You will keep me safe in your temple as if I were on some high rock somewhere. Lord, don't hide yourself from me. Don't be angry with me. Don't turn away from your servant. Forgive all my sins. You have been my help. Don't leave me. Don't abandon me, O God, my Savior. Teach me, Lord, what you want me to do. Lead me along a safe path because of my enemies. Don't abandon me, Lord. Lord, I know that I will live to see your goodness right now in this present life. And I trust you, Lord. I praise you for your faithfulness.